Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Yes, very good. Can. Thank you for being in here. Uh, Eliu, Jose, uh, Jovito, and Jose Isaias, Rafael, Ana Maria, Rosa Maria, Noel, Rodrigo, Jose Francisco, Claudia, and Alejandra. Yes, I have some problems with Zoom, but I fixed it. So I think that we wouldn't have any problem right now. And we are going to start the class. Before uh, continuing with the class, do you have any questions about the platform? Section through midterm exam. Preguntas de la plataforma? I have some question in the midterm exam, mm -hmm. but I don't remember right now exactly what what the section, what what okay. the okay. But later, yes, you can send me the questions later, even tomorrow. And remember that on Monday we won't have classes because it's Labor Day, right? It's okay. uh, Día del Trabajo, el lunes. Yes, Rosa okay. Maria. Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. In the midterm exam. In the third, third exercise, part two. The third, the third exercise. We. Oui. Okay, let me see here. So it's this one, in, this in one, the second this part. one, second part, a kiss, okay. Yes. So it the says, read the quotations, complete the sentences and report his speech. I'm writing with Julia. He told me he was writing with Julia. So this one, this one is in present continuous and it turns into past continuous, right? Okay. The first one, the first one. this is the, 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 the answer. Any other questions right now? Yes, I have the, the same trouble. The same in this problem. Part, this part, yes. Yes, he mm -hmm. told me. Yeah, he told me that he was oh, fighting with Julian. Mm -hmm. And the second one is Nancy had, right? Because in number two, it says Nancy has never been skinned. So it's the present perfect and it turns into past perfect, right? Nancy had never been skinned. And here, is anyone ready to leave? She asked. So we use an if clause because it's a question, right? She asked if anyone was ready to leave. It is in present tense, the question. So it turns into past, right? Simple past. And the last one, Pam lost a lot of weight. My mother told me that Pam lost a lot of weight. We can uh, keep it the same, puede ser igual, or we can use the uh, the past perfect, right? Uh, my mother told me that Pam had lost a lot of weight. So that will be the answers. Um, if you have, if if you're still having problems with it or any issue, just let me know. Okay. Okay. So now we are going to continue with the presentation. Yesterday we were checking. Um, let's see here. This one, right? We were checking the present perfect and the present perfect continuous. We were using for. And since, do you remember what is the meaning of four? Four. Four, right? Four many years, for one year, for two years. And since, what is the meaning of since? Desde. Desde, right? Since 1996, right? Uh, like the brands, right? Este, como las marcas. Desde 1900, but that's since, right? So that is the meaning. And we were checking yesterday some information about uh, the present perfect continuous and the perfect per, the present perfect tense, right? Present perfect tense is for non-action verbs, uh, for things that 
have studied uh, in the past and they're still true now. They haven't changed, right? And also for, let me see here. Yes, for things that are still relevant. And for present perfect continuous, we can use the present perfect continuous with action verbs and also for continuous or repeated actions, right? That have been happening recently, right? So for example, in this example, the woman is crying because she's cutting onions, right? And the husband asks her, uh, your eyes are red. Have you been crying? No, I've been cutting onions. So that happened recently, right? That's why she's still crying. And yesterday we did this exercise also. The response is here. Uh, I will share all this information today at the end of the class. So you can check it and you can have it right whenever you want to. So um, I don't know if you still have questions about the present perfect and present perfect continuous because today we are going to check something else. ¿Aún tienen preguntas? No? In my case, I have a question with since. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you say hasta? Or Until. Where, where in the moment we use? Like for example? Uh, I lived in Candelaria since 2012, hasta 28. Eating? From, right. I, I have lived um, in Candelaria from this day, ah, okay. from 2002 until 2012. Let's see. Let's say, right. This day hasta, right? From until. Or we can use also since until, right? Very good question. Now, uh, we're going to just to practice a little bit of this, just in case that you have some, some questions, we still have some doubts. It says, make sentences with the present perfect or present perfect continuous. And for and since, if necessary, use the present perfect continuous if possible, if possible, right? So, Example, we have I, I, sorry, work for a charity, eight years. What is the answer? The answer is I've been working for a charity for eight years, right? So we just need to use the present perfect or the present perfect continuous. And if it is necessary, for and since. Number one, we know each other. We were children. So what would be number one? We, we have been known. We have, been. we have known, uh huh. We have known. Uh, each other, right? Each other. Mm -hmm. We were children. Since we were children. Very Since good. We Since we were children. Yes. Since, Since we were children. Okay, very good. You see, it's very simple. Number two. The children play computer games two hours. The children have been playing computer games for two hours. Okay. For two hours, very good. And number three, your sister have that hairstyle a long time? It's a question. So for questions, what do we do for questions? Have your sister? Okay, have or has? Has. Has. has, has, has. Okay. Has your sister? <laughs> and then have that hairstyle, but how does it change in, in present perfect? Has. <laughs> Had very good. Has your sister had that 
hairstyle. Uh huh. For a long time. Mm -hmm. Long time. Very good. Perfect. Number three. I'm sorry. Four. I love her the first day we met. I have been loved her. I have been loved, loved, loved her, her mm -hmm. since the first day we met. Okay, we're going to check that later. No problem. Let's why, see. Why love and what? Why? Nor is mm -hmm. loving. Yeah, probably because it's continuous, right? I have been loving her. Okay. Let's see number five. My internet connection not work yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, my internet connection that hasn't worked. My internet connection hasn't worked. Worked, uh huh. Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Since okay. yesterday. Since yesterday. Okay, that's the ayer. Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. Yesterday. Lovely. We are just we are just reviewing yesterday's information. Very good. Next one is a question, number six. How long you wait? How long have you wait? How long have you waited? Uh, waited, yeah. Okay. Have you been waiting? How long have you been waiting? Okay, let's see. Yes, that can be. It can be possible, yeah. Let's see, uh, seven, I be a teacher three years. I have been a teacher for, for three years. Okay, I have been a teacher for three years, very good. Eight, it snow, five o'clock this morning. It has been snowing. No, it it's no. It has been snowing at mm -hmm. five o'clock this morning. Okay, it has been snowing five o'clock this morning. Okay, we are going to check that. Very very good. No problem. Nine. Sam, not study enough. Recently, Tom has not been studying. Mm -hmm. has not been studying enough recently. Is that correct? What do the others say? Tom has not been studying enough recently. Is correct for you? Sam has not been studying enough. Enough recently. Yes. Okay. Yes, right. Let's see. Let's see. And the last one. You live in Chicago a long time. It's a question. Have you been living in Chicago for a long time? Very good. Have you been living in Chicago for a long time? Very good. It's the same as we say, have you been living in San Salvador? Have you been living in, or have you lived, right? It's the same, very good. We are going to check right now the answers. The first one you said, we have known each other since we were children. Response, we've known each other since we were children. Very good, correct. Two, the children have been playing computer games for two hours have been playing. The children have been playing computer games for two hours. Perfect, very good. Three, 
Has your sister had that hairstyle for a long time? Very good. Has your sister had that hairstyle for a long time? Perfect. Number four. I have been loving her since the first time, the first day we met, sorry. I've loved her since the first day we met. Why is not loving and it's loved her? Why? <clears throat> I've loved her since the first day we met. Why is that? It's an action verb or something. Exactly, exactly. It's a non-action verb or it's an ex stated verb. So for action mm -hmm. verb, we use the present perfect continuous. And for uh, non-action verbs or stated verbs, we use like, like, have, known, love, right? We use the present perfect. That's why. Very good. Next one. My internet connection hasn't worked since yesterday. My internet connection hasn't been working, right? Since yesterday. Hasn't been working. Why? Because Work. it's an action that starts in the past and continue until this moment. So exactly. It's an action that just uh, it started right like since yesterday. No ha estado trabajando, como si mi internet, mi, mi conexión a internet no ha estado trabajando desde ayer. It's the same, right? In Spanish and in English, it's the same. My internet connection hasn't been working since yesterday, and it's an action verb also. Next one, how long have you been waiting? Let's see. How long have you been waiting? Very good, perfect. Seven, I have been a teacher for three years. I've been a teacher, this contraction, for three years. Perfect, again. It has been snowing five o'clock this morning. It's been snowing since, right? Since five o'clock this morning. So that word was missing in this one. The rest is correct. Since. And uh, the next one. Sam hasn't or has not been studying enough recently. Very good. Correct. And the last one. Have you been living in Chicago for a long time? Have you been living in Chicago for a long time? Perfect. So you can practice with this, right? And if you want to, you can rewrite them, right? In a piece of paper again. So if you still have questions about this, um, this is the information that I found. Also, it's, it's some words are in Spanish, but I think that it's interesting. This is the present perfect. This is that what we studied yesterday. This is just a review versus the present perfect continuous, right? And this is the structure, right? Have, has, and the verb in past participle and have, has, been, and ing. That is the difference. And yesterday we checked that this is the structure, right? Have, not, or the contraction haven't, or has not and hasn't, right? It depends on the pronoun, right? The subject pronoun. And this is the present perfect continuous. This is the structure, right? I have or I have not, right? This is the negative. I have not been working, right? I have not been working. I have not been studying. I have not been, um, I don't know, eating, etc. And this, in present perfect, we need to study the, the past participles, right? And for questions, remember, Questions we need to write first the auxiliary have or has for both for present continuous or for present perfect. These are examples, right? I have studied a lot. She has been, she has seen that movie twice and present perfect continuous. I have been working for three hours. He has been reading since 11 a.m. So, aquí está en español, right? Uh, completed actions in the past without mentioning the time. I have studied a lot. And also uh, when we count, uh, when, when, when we have repeated something, right? She has been, she has seen that movie twice, right? So that's another one. And this one is the present perfect continuous. It's in Spanish also. Things that started in the past and they continue, like um, you already said, in, in, the, in, in the present, right? He has been reading since 11 a.m. This means that he is still reading, right? 
and actions that started in the past and they just finished, right? I am tired because I have been working for three hours. So I just finished uh, working, right? I just finished that. And these are keywords, right? Uh, we use, normally we use present perfect with already, yet, never, ever, just, always, once, twice, times, or how many times, right? And with the present perfect continuous, normally we use all day long, all night long, all morning, how long, a long time, since, and for. But we can use since and for for both, right? I've lived, uh, I've lived here for three years and I've been living here for three years. It's the same, right? It's the same situation. Now, do you know what stated verbs are? Saben que son los stated verbs or non-action verbs? Do you know that? Yes or no? No? Okay. No. No. So this is in Spanish, so you can uh, understand it better. Stated verbs. Let's see. Well, you know how you're, you're not supposed to read in Spanish, but these are verbs that um, it's a stay, right? No actions, right? So we don't use it with the present continuous or we don't use it with the present perfect continuous. Like love, right? Love es un estado, no es una acción. Like, hate, one, have, own, understand, believe, and know. Why is an state? And what does it mean that? ¿Qué significa que es a state? For example, I cannot say, I am, I am knowing English, right? I am knowing English. I cannot say that. Yo estoy sabiendo inglés, but tomorrow, Yes, I will still know English, right? Todavía me va a quedar ese conocimiento, a menos que yo tenga una enfermedad o algo. Pero eh, yo voy a saber inglés desde que comencé a estudiarlo hasta hoy, ¿verdad? Ese eh, conocimiento es acumulativo, esto es un estado, ¿verdad? No va a cambiar del día a la mañana. No voy a decir ahora sé inglés, mañana no, después sí, después no, no, right? So es un estado, es como love. Sometimes we can see in English like some expressions. Like, I'm loving it, right? It's like in McDonald's, they have this slogan, I'm loving it. But this is just like a, an exception, right? But for love, it's, it's like love. Like, I, I cannot love something or someone one day and the other day I won't love it, right? No, it's a state, it's un estado. So that's why um, they they use this uh, stated verbs. That, that's the meaning of stated verb, okay? Questions about stated verbs? Preguntas? Questions? No. Okay, perfect. And remember that you are going to have this information, right? So no problem. Uh, just to check, we have this other exercise and then we are going to practice the next, the next topic. So for example, uh, present perfect or present perfect continuous. I already do my homework, right? What is there? I have I have already done my homework or I've been doing my homework? I've already doing my homework. I have already. Already. No, I have already done. done, my done. Okay. It says, George, wait for 20 minutes. Has been waiting. George has been waiting for 20 minutes. Yes, because we have a time there, right? 20 minutes. Yes. She know him since elementary school. She, she has known. She has known him, right? Because it's a stated verb, right? Very good. It's an action verb. My mother just called me. My mother has just called me or my mother has been just calling me? No, has just called me. Has just called me. Very good. My eyes are red because I watch TV all day long. I have been watching. I have been watching. Exactly. I have been watching. A negative. Not be to Cancun yet. I have not been. 
Uh -huh. I have not been to Cancun yet. Very good. And the last one is a question. How long, how long here you work, right? How long have how you been? Have you been working? working exactly. Here. How long have you been working here? Perfect. So as you can see, we can use all of this already, right? Already. Uh, these are keywords, right? The keywords that I mentioned before. Already, present perfect, yet, never, just, always, and present perfect continuous. We use these words, right? So this is a keyword, already. I've already done my homework for 20 minutes, right? So he has been waiting for 20 minutes. Uh, she has known since, right? She has known him since elementary. This is a stated verb. My mother has just called me, right? Just, right? Just called me. That is another uh, word, right, that we use with. Uh, present perfect. My eyes uh, are red because TV all day long, right? It's an action that it's been happening, right? I have not been to Cancun yet, right? Can Cancun yet, right? This is another, ver another word. And mm -hmm. how long, right? How long have you been working here? Very good. Perfect. Perfect. Very well done. Now, we are going to finish uh, this week with uh, some practices we still have if we don't finish no problem we can continue right uh, with the uh, we only we are missing the this one the simple past and the past perfect right that is the only thing that we are missing here simple past and past perfect how can we uh, combine them como lo podemos combinar and I will give you a, a homework for uh, Tuesday. El lunes no hay clases. Remember, lunes no clases porque es el día del... Labor Day. Labor, Labor Day. Day, exactly. Día de el trabajo. Very good. So, um, I just need you to... Let's see, because uh, some of you at the beginning of the class, the first, the first session that we had, you told me, teacher... I need to practice listening, right? I need to practice speaking. Grammar is important, but when we when we put it into practice, then we can see if we have understood or not, right? Grammar is important, but also practicing. So I have an audio here, Changing Lives. That is a uh, listening that I have for you. We are going to listen to uh, uh, this um well, what, what she has done here in this place in Africa, and you will uh, um, you will uh, answer right these questions. Number one, it's um, what does she say about her job? Her name is Jane, right? Jane, and she is in Uganda. She's working there. So, what does she say about her job? Uh, the vacation to Uganda, what happened there? What happened when the lorry broke down? What was the condition of the school? What does she say about the children? And the headmaster is like the principal, right? El como el director, headmaster, asked for. And then we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to do part two, right? This is a listening exercise, right? Listening. So we are going to begin with this one. Okay, let me know if it is difficult, difficult for you to, to understand. I and mean, if it is difficult, I will activate the subtitles, okay? I will play it two times, no problem. Okay, and let me know if you are able to listen. If you don't listen, please let me know. 1.45, part one. Jane, you're an elementary school teacher and a writer. What kind of books do you write? Well, I write books for children who are learning English as a foreign language. How long have you been a writer? Hmm, let me see, since 1990. So for about 22 years. Tell us about the trip that changed your life. Where were you going? Well, it was in the summer of 2008, and my family, my husband and I and our three children, decided to have a holiday of a lifetime and to go to Africa. 
We went to Uganda and Rwanda to see the mountain gorillas. It was something we'd always wanted to do. Anyway, about halfway through the trip, we were in Uganda and we were travelling in a lorry when the lorry broke down. So the driver had to find a mechanic to come and help fix it. And then what happened? Well, as soon as we stopped, lots of children appeared and surrounded us. I could see some long buildings quite near, so I asked the children what they were, and they said in English, that's our school. And I was very curious to see what a Ugandan school was like, so I asked them to show it to me. What was it like? I was shocked when I first saw it. The walls were falling down, the blackboards were broken, and there weren't many desks. But the children were so friendly, and I asked them if they would like to learn a song in English. They said yes, and I started teaching them some songs, like Head, Shoulders, Knees and Toes, a song I've used all over the world to teach children parts of the body. Almost immediately, the classroom filled up with children of all ages, and they all wanted to learn. I was just amazed by how quickly they learned the song. Did you meet the teachers? Yes, we did, and the headmaster too. He explained that the school was called St Joseph's, and it was a community school for orphans, very poor children and refugees. I asked him what the school needed. I thought that he might say, we need books or paper, and then later we could send them to him. But actually, he said, what we need is a new school. And I thought, yes, of course, he's right. These children deserve to have better conditions than this to learn in. So when I got back home, my husband and I, and other people who were with us on the trip, decided to set up an organisation to get money to build a new school. OK. 1.46. Part. OK, very good. So, um, did you have any problem with it? Do you want me to play it again with the subtitles? Or you have the answers already? Play again. Play it again, right. Okay, remember, I will ask you about her job, right? What, what does she do? What happened in the vacation to Uganda? What happened when the lorry, the lorry is the truck, right? This one, this one is a lorry. So it's a truck, the green truck. The lorry broke down, the condition of the school, the children, what happened when they saw the children and what the headmaster asked for, asked her for. So we're going to play it again. I guess there is a second part, so I will let it play it also. And I will show you the, the subtitles. Can you see this a dark square? Yes. Okay, so you will uh, you will be reading there the the subtitles, okay? Okay, I will play it again. Do you write? Well, I write books for Okay. 1.45. Part 1. Jane, you're an elementary school teacher and a writer. What kind of books do you write? Well, I write books for children who are learning English as a foreign language. How long have you been a writer? Hmm, let me see. Since 1990. So for about 22 years. Tell us about the trip that changed your life. Where were you going? Well, it was in the summer of 2008, and my family, my husband and I and our three children, decided to have a holiday of a lifetime and to go to Africa. We went to Uganda and Rwanda to see the mountain gorillas. It was something we'd always wanted to do. Anyway, about halfway through the trip, we were in Uganda, and we were travelling in a lorry, when the lorry broke down. So the driver had to find a mechanic to come and help fix it. And then what happened? Well, as soon as we stopped, lots of children appeared and surrounded us. I could see some long buildings quite near, 
So I asked the children what they were, and they said in English, that's our school. And I was very curious to see what a Ugandan school was like. So I asked them to show it to me. What was it like? I was shocked when I first saw it. The walls were falling down, the blackboards were broken, and there weren't many desks. But the children were so friendly, and I asked them if they would like to learn a song in English. They said yes, and I started teaching them some songs, like Head, Shoulders, Knees and Toes, a song I've used all over the world to teach children parts of the body. Almost immediately, the classroom filled up with children of all ages, and they all wanted to learn. I was just amazed by how quickly they learned the song. Did you meet the teachers? Yes, we did, and the headmaster too. He explained that the school was called St Joseph's, and it was a community school for orphans, very poor children and refugees. I asked him what the school needed. I thought that he might say, we need books or paper, and then later we could send them to him. But actually, he said, what we need is a new school. And I thought, yes, of course, he's right. These children deserve to have better conditions than this to learn in. So when I got back home, my husband and I, and other people who were with us on the trip, decided to set up an organisation to get money to build a new school. 1.46 Part 2 So Adelante, Africa was born. Okay, very good. So we're going to check right now uh, the answers, right? What was her normal job? Elementary normal school in the teacher in a writer. And a writer. She used to write uh, books for foreign, kids, right? Yes, that are blending English as or foreign, Eng I don't know, uh, English as a second language. English is a second language, so English is a foreign language, very good. And she had a vacation to Uganda and Rwanda. What happened in that vacation? What happened there? They went in to see the Mountain gorillas, mm -hmm. and maybe they um, have have gone there, and the and the truck broke down. Yes, the, the the truck broke down, and what happened when the the truck broke down? A lot of children surrendered. Surrender? It's that correct? I don't know. Uh, Surround, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Surrounded her. Uh huh. Surrounded the truck. The, the truck. And well, they see the condition of the school and. And how was the condition of the school? It was beautiful. It was clean. The walls are um, estaban cayendo. <laughs> Yeah, they were falling down, right? Falling exactly. down. Exactly. The blackboard was broken, and there weren't many desks. There were many desks. Very good. And what happened with the children? They they were shy. They were they were they they were able to speak English. They speak yes. English or not? Yes, right? Yes, they were able yes, to speak English. Yes. And the headmaster, the principal of the, the school, what did, did he ask for? A new school. A new a school. New, a, a new, new school. school. Exactly. We have in different places, right? Not only in Africa, but in Latin America and different places, we have schools like this, right? And some people come and they try to help these kind of children. So now we're going to check these ones, right? We're going to play the second part, part two. Very good. Now we understand a little bit of it. Now, 
it says, correct the wrong information in these sentences. Jane's son chose the name Adelante Africa, which means go forward Africa in Spanish, right? Is it true or not, right? The new school opened in 2012, right? Or when, right? Today, the school has 75 children, yes or no, right? Adelante Africa has also been trying to improve the children's English, yes or no, right? They are building a home for the teachers. Two of Jane's children have been helping in Uganda. Jane says the school has changed children's lives because it has given them an education. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jane thinks that she gives more than she gets. And the last one, the website has a video Jane's daughter took of her teaching the children. So we are going to listen to it and you tell me if it is correct, if it is true, or what is the correct information. We're going to finish this exercise. Let's see. Do you want me to play the, the subtitles? Yes, right. Yeah, because it's kind of difficult to understand. She has a like 1.45. Like a British accent, but I will play it. Uh, I will play the second part. Okay. 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 One point forty-six. Part two. So Adelante Africa was born. Why did you decide to call it that? Well, we wanted a name that gave the idea of Africa. Sorry, let me activate the the subtitles. I don't know why they disappeared. Let's see here. Okay. D6, part two. So Adelante Africa was born. Why did you decide to call it that? Well, we wanted a name that gave the idea of Africa moving forward. And my husband is Spanish, and he suggested Adelante Africa, because in Spanish, Adelante means go forward. And Adelante Africa sort of sounded better than go forward Africa. How long did it take to raise the money for the new school? Amazingly enough, not long really, only about two years. The school opened on the 14th of March 2010 with 75 children. Today it has nearly 500 children. That's great. I understand that since the new school opened, you've been working on other projects for these children. Yes. When we opened the school, we realized that although the children now had a beautiful new school, they couldn't really make much progress because they were suffering from malnutrition, malaria, things like that. So we've been working to improve their diet and health. And at the moment, we're building a house where children who don't have families can live. And are your children involved in Adelante Africa too? Yes, absolutely. They all go out to Uganda at least once a year. My daughter Tessie runs the Facebook page and my other daughter, Anna, runs a project to help children to go to secondary school. And Georgie, my son, organizes a football tournament there every year. And how do you think you have most changed the children's lives? I think the school has changed the children's lives because it has given them hope. People from outside came and listened to them and cared about them. But it's not only the children whose lives have changed. Adelante Africa has also changed me and my family. We've been very lucky in life. I feel that life has given me a lot. Now I want to give something back. But it's not all giving. I feel that I get more from them than I give. I love being there. I love their smiles and how they have such a strong sense of community. And I love feeling that my family and the other members of Adelante Africa are accepted as part of that community. And do you have a website? Yes, we do. 
It's www.adelanteafrica.com. We've had the website for about four years. It was one of the first things we set up. If you'd like to find out more about Adelante Africa, please go there and have a look. There are lots of photos and even a video my son took of me teaching the children to sing on that very first day. Maybe it will change your life too. Who knows? Okay, very good. Now that was a good story. Now we're going to check uh, the answers, right? Or do you want to listen to it again? Can we check the answers now? Yes, right. Yes. Yes, okay, perfect. So uh, let's see, number one, Jane's son chose the name Adelante Africa, which means go forward Africa in Spanish. Is that true or not? It's wrong. It's wrong. What is the correct one? Her husband. Mm -hmm. Her husband, right? Jane's husband, right? Exactly. Jane's husband chose the name. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, number two, the new school opened in 2012. Is that true or not? No. It's wrong. It's wrong. When did it open? 2010. 2010, 2010, perfect. Today, the school has 75 children. Is that correct? No. No, what is the correct? 100? 500. 500. 500. Okay, perfect. Adelante Africa has also been trying to improve the children's English. Is that correct? Mm, mm, no. I think um, Adelante Africa has also been trying to improve the nutrition. Of the, the nutrition. Children. Exactly. Perfect. Very good. Because they suffer of malnutrition, malaria, right? Very good. It says they are building home for the teachers. Is that correct? Let's see here. I have the answers here. No problem. They are building home for the teachers. They are building a house for the children, right? Who don't have families, not the teachers, the children, right? Six, two of Jane's children have been helped in Uganda. Two or false? Three. Three, right, exactly. Okay. She has three children, exactly. Jane says the school has changed children's lives because it has given them an education. It is true? Mm, it has given hope. Yes, it's education, wrong. but... Uh -huh. Education, yes, but also hope. Very good. Hope. Jane thinks that she gives more than she gets. It's no. correct. Correct? No. No, what does she think? No, no, she no, receives no. more from them than she gives. Exactly. She receives more from them than she gives. Exactly. And the last one, the website has a video Jane's daughter took of her teaching the children, correct? Her son, not daughter. Her, not daughter, exactly, very good. So the son, Jane's son, took the video of her teaching the children. Very good, you paid attention and you see, you understood even though it was kind of complicated, her, her accent was kind of complicated, um you got all of the responses correct very good perfect i am really happy with that because it seems that you just need to practice that that's what it means you just need to practice to better your listening because you understand very good now we almost finished i'm just we have a lot of material but we're going to do it on monday i guess oh no sorry on tuesday and we have the simple past and past perfect as a homework because tomorrow we won't have classes and also on monday i want you to uh talk about an, anec an anecdote 
tell me an anecdote about something that happened to you, something funny, something difficult, something that you have learned, an anecdote that you can share with the class. It has to be like, not that long, right? It can be short. It can be like five lines, at the most 10 lines, right? Just write it, use, use what we have uh, learned here. And also try to use the simple past and past perfect, right? Uh, this is the information that you can find in the uh, platform. It says, we can use these verbs to describe something that happens at a later time. And some, uh, for example, the simple past. And we use uh, these uh, words, right? Afterwards, later, the next day. And we laughed, right? We use the simple past. Also, uh, we use the simple past when we use the verbs with the simple uh, to describe two things that happen at the same time. And we use the adverbs with the past perfect to describe something that was true or that happened before another event in the past. So we use both uh, tenses to tell a story, right? That's what it means. Um, that's how we use it, right? For example, I was embarrassed because I called the teacher mom afterward we all laughed about it so we use the simple past to to talk about something funny something that already happened right the moment i got in the shower the telephone rang right an interruption right two things happen at the same time and the third example anna went to japan last year before before that she had only traveled to florida so this is like two things right something that happened in the past and another one that happened before, right? So actually, this is another information that I found. So this is the past perfect. As you can see, uh, we use had or had not or had plus the verb in participle, right? And this is the simple past, the verb in past, didn't for negative or did for questions, right? Example. I went to the church yesterday. I didn't study last Monday. Did you meet her three days ago, right? And this is the example for past perfect. I had seen that movie before that day. She hadn't been to France before summer. Had you finished before the concert, right? So I will share this information with you because we just have five minutes, right? I will explain this, no problem. But you can check it, right? This is in, some of them are in Spanish. So it says, this is the past, right? Past, simple past. The past and now. So we use the past for things that happened already, right? Yesterday, I woke up. Then I took a shower and drank some coffee, right? Then past perfect. This is the past and this is now, right? Past perfect before that day, right? And now. Es eh, una acción que tuvo lugar en el pasado antes de alguna referencia en el pasado. For example, I had seen that movie before that day. Ya había visto, ¿verdad? I had seen, I, yo había visto esa película antes de ese día. I had seen, right? So, it's something that happened before, right? We can use also the past perfect with indirect uh, reported speech. She told me that she had started, right? As we already know, uh, the tenses changes, right? So that's why he's mentioning this in reported speech. And also an action that uh, happened before another one. After she had divorced, she found her love. So we use the simple past here, she found her love. But uh, what happened before, right? right? This one, she had divorced first, she had divorced, and then she found her love life. So we use the past perfect to something that happened before a uh, past action. We can say before she found her love life, she had divorced, or by the time she found her love life, she had divorced. Ya se había divorciado, ¿verdad? Podemos decirlo opuesto también, ¿verdad? O como... No opuesto, sino que al revés, ¿verdad? Antes que encontrara su amor, ¿verdad? Before she found her love life, she had divorced. We can use the, the past, the simple past there also. 
with this uh, simple past, we use these words when, first, then, by the time, and before. And with, with the past perfect, we use up to then, already, yet, just, never, because, and after. Uh, let me see. I don't know if you have questions about this. Preguntas acerca de esto. Um, just a question. Uh, um, can you go back to the last? Uh, um, check. No. No, 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 no. It's for work. Uh, check. No, I just have a, a doubt about about a word, but no, no worries. I'm about going to look. About a word? Oh, yes. Up to then. What does that mean? Up to then. Yeah. Hasta, hasta entonces, I think it is. Uh -huh. Up to then. Uh -huh. Up to then. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Actually, yes. It's not very common. Hasta entonces. Yes. Up to then, uh, this has happened, right? Or this, this uh, happened, right? Or uh, this uh, was done, right? So, very good. So, actually, asked entonces, yes. So, we have some um, exercises here, but we are going to do that. I don't, I don't know if we can do that later, or let me see, because I have some problems at the beginning. Yeah, we're going to complete it right, right now because it, it's only seven, right? We're going to do it really fast. And then remember the homework for Monday. I'm sorry, for Tuesday. Number one, when I get there, the party already start. What is uh, the answer? When I got there. Mm -hmm. The party has already been started. Has already, yeah, has already started, has right? Already has started. already started. Already Very started. good. Very good. Yes, that is, we are going to combine the past perfect and the simple past. Vamos a combinarlo, okay? Very good, Eli. Very good. Perfect. Number two, before she take the bus, she eat an apple. Before she took the bus, she has eaten an apple. Very good, perfect. After I win the medal, she kissed me. After I won the medal, mm -hmm. she has kissed me. Very good, after she I has, won the she, medal, she has, right? She has, she has kissed, kissed me. Kissed. Very good. So, because it's an action that happened before the other one that finished, right? Very good. By the time he sent her a message, she fall asleep. So, by the time, we use simple past, right? By the time. Okay. By the time he sent her message, mm -hmm. she, she, she has... Fallen asleep. She has fallen asleep. Very good. First, he steal a car. Then the detective arrest him. First, he stole a car. Then the detective has arrested him. Okay, we are going to check that. Six, I not call her because I lose my cell phone. I don't call her. I didn't call her because I have lost my cell phone. Very good. I didn't call her because I had lost my cell phone, right? And the last one, I've never had a girlfriend before. I have never had mm -hmm. a girlfriend before. Very good. Very good. Perfect. So I'm going to share this with you. As you can see, uh, I, in this one, in number five, is the only one that first he stole a car, then the detective arrested him, right? In this case, 
uh, the two actions um, had finished. And this is describing, right? First, this happened, and then that happened, right? That's why we wrote it in, in simple pass. But the rest were very good, very good. I've never had a, a girlfriend before. I lost very good. So that's how we combine the past perfect and the simple past to, to say something that already happened. That's why I want an anecdote, right? For example, the story that Liu um, uh, mentioned yesterday, that, that was really good. And you can, this is, a, this is a conversation, right? For example, the, um, the time when I met John Travolta, right? That's a conversation. Probably we are going to practice it on, on Tuesday, but bring an anecdote and try to practice this, okay? Try to combine both tenses. Do you have any question right now? Preguntas? No? Okay, very good. So uh, we are going to finish the class right now and have a very good long weekend, okay? Take care. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have, you too. Thank you. have a nice uh, weekend. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Goodbye.